the primary physical exam part one lecture. Anatomy and physiology. Cells are the basic unit of life. There are three main parts of the cell. There is the plasma membrane, intracellular environment, and nucleus. The plasma membrane is the outside of the cell. The intracellular environment is the cytoplasm and all living material that carries on cell function. And the nucleus is what carries our genetic code. Tissue, there are four different types of tissue. The study of tissue is called histology. The first type of tissue is epithelial, which can be simple or stratified epithelium. It makes up our cells, glands, lining of our body cavity and organs. Connective tissue, which is the most widely distributed in the body, consists of collagen, bone, cartilage, oedipus, ligaments, tendons, blood, and lymph. Muscle can be split up into three groups. We have the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. Skeletal muscle is striated and voluntary. It attaches to bone and helps us move our muscles, such as our legs and our arms. Cardiac muscle is striated and involuntary. It helps and is part of the heart muscle. The Smooth muscle is non-striated and involuntary and lines blood vessels and organs and causes peristalsis and vasoconstriction throughout our body. We also have the nervous type tissue, which consists of neurons and neuroglia cells, which helps transmit stimuli to our brain. Organs, which are two or more types of tissue. They may have one or many functions. An example of an organ having more than one function would be the liver. The liver produces bile to help with our digestion. And it also converts glucose to glycogen and stores it for a case of emergency. And it also can help with the breakdown of medications that we eat, among other things that the liver can do for us. Organs can also be part of one or several systems. So the pancreas is part of the endocrine system as it secretes hormones such as insulin, but it also can be part of the digestive system as it creates enzymes to help with our digestive tract. Symptoms made up of organs and associated structures working together, together to perform specific functions. Examples of systems are reproductive system, endocrine system, and immune system. Here are the different body systems within our body. Blood is comprised of four different components. White blood cells with, which help fight foreign invaders. Red blood cells help carry oxygen to different tissues in our body. Platelets help in the clotting process. And plasma carries nutrients to different parts of our body. The cardiovascular system, comprised of our heart and the arteries, which pump the oxygenated blood out to the rest of our body. The capillaries are a one cell blood vessel where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. And then the veins which carry the deoxygenated blood back to the heart and then to the lungs to be excreted. The endocrine system produces hormones that help our body function such as our thyroid hormone which regulates our metabolism and blood pressure our pancreas, which produces insulin, which helps us absorb glucose, which converts it to ATP, and many other endocrine glands that help our body maintain its hemostasis. The integumentary system comprises of our skin, which helps in protection against foreign invaders and helps with temperature regulation. 
The gastrointestinal system helps us digest our food and absorb our food into our bloodstream. It also helps us excrete waste. The lymphatic system, which maintains fluid balance and also helps with our immunity. The musculoskeletal system helps us produce heat and also produces red blood cells called hematopoiesis. The nervous system helps us with reflexes and helps us receive stimuli. The reproductive system, pretty self-explanatory. The respiratory system consists of internal and external exchange. Internal exchange is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide at the cellular level. External exchange is the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange in the lungs. The respiratory system also helps with our acid base balance and helps regulate our pH in our body, which is very sensitive. We also have our sensory system, which we have five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling. Feeling is also considered part of the balance, which your book mentions. And the urinary system filters waste and maintains electrolytes within our body. The primary care physician often times called the PCP, treats patients of all ages, provides lifetime health care for families. Primary care referral system, they are often referred to as the gatekeeper. This is especially important with new legislation within the Affordable Care Act and the creation of patient-centered medical home, where it's important to get the referrals that patients need and help coordinate care among caregivers, so among the primary care physician and maybe the nursing home or a primary care physician and a family member. Coordinating that care to make sure that we are meeting the needs of our family members and patients that are seen. Evaluates all healthcare needs and works with the medical assistant to give quality, the most quality care. The physical exam, the medical assistance role, there are three different roles. So room preparation, patient preparation, and assisting the physician. Room preparation consists of stocked with all equipment and supplies necessary. We oftentimes do this at the beginning of the day and then throughout the day as necessary. Check expiration dates and discard expired materials. Oftentimes we do this at the first of the month or at the end of the month. Ensure the room is private, well lit, and good in temperature. Clean and disinfect rooms between patients to avoid infections. It's also important to look in the sinks of the rooms because sometimes physicians will throw surgical instruments at the bottom of the sink and the medical assistant might miss that. Be sure drapes, sheets, and gowns are ready to use, so make sure there is good stock in your room. And then in between each patient, you want to make sure that there is a gown and a drape set out for that patient. Arrange equipment for easy access, so setting out the equipment necessary for that exam out on the counter prior to bringing the patient back. And then observe standard precautions. So if a patient comes in suspecting of TB or highly infectious disease, you would want to get out the appropriate standard precautions. Supplies, here is an example of the supplies that may be used for the primary physical exam. Each physician is a little bit different and may request something a little bit different. This is in general what physicians would require The supplies that you just saw, so the ophthalmoscope inspects the inner eye structures. The tongue depressor holds down the tongue during the throat exam. The otoscope examines the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane. The physician oftentimes uses this, but also the medical assistant when an ear wash or ear lavage is ordered. The medical assistant will use the otoscope to examine where that cerumen is and how we are going to get that out. 
supplies, nasal speculums used to inspect nose linings, nasal membranes, and internal septums. The tuning fork is used to test auditory acuity and bone vibration. The tape measure is used for head circumference, chest circumference, waist circumference, and we also, a newer thing is neck circumference for patients with sleep apnea. The stethoscope is used as a listening device when listening to body parts, so sometimes we'll auscultate the heart, the lungs, sometimes the stomach, depending on what that particular patient may need. The reflex hammer is used for, to test neurological reflexes, such as the patellar reflex or the Achilles reflex. Gloves, protection for microorganisms, and also additional supplies as ordered by your physician. Patient preparation, ensure a complete medical record and sign consent forms. Oftentimes before I call a patient back, I will read the last note that the doctor has written on the patient. If I am crunched for time, I will just read the summary or the plan to get an idea of what that patient might need. Also with the Affordable Care Act, there is something called meaningful use that you will hear a lot about out in the medical field. And this is the appropriate use of medical records. And the ability to use our medical records in how we should. So what happens is certain medical records, especially in the area, will have like a dashboard system and it will highlight the needs that the patient might need. So a patient might need a Tdap or a pap smear or a diabetic foot exam. So that would highlight in yellow or red and that would identify, oh, I should probably prep the patient to have those types of procedures done. So looking that, at that ahead of time to identify the needs of the patient before you even call them back. Once you've identified what the patient needs on top of what the appointment was identified as, you would then call your patient back, introduce yourself, and address the patient by name. You would also want to ask a second identifier such as a date of birth. You would want to verify accuracy of insurance information. Typically, this is done at the check-in process, not necessarily by the medical assistant. You would then obtain any pre-ordered specimens. So if you are seeing a patient for a urinary tract infection, you would get that urine specimen prior to the physician even seeing the patient. So while the physician is in seeing that patient, you can then test that urine specimen and have the results by the time the physician comes out. This just helps the flow of the office a lot of times and helps a faster treatment for that patient. Another example is a patient coming in for possible strep throat. I would oftentimes swab the throat and get the rapid strep test going before I continue on in the rooming process. So by the time the physician is done seeing the patient, we have some sort of results and we can come up with a treatment plan. Just helps patient flow in the medical office. After we obtain the ordered specimens, we will oftentimes get the height and weight out in the, out in the hall or in a private place, not in the waiting room. And then I like to do allergies, medications, and the chief complaint next kind of helps comfort the patient, shows them that you care, kind of establish a rapport, and help them relax a little bit before we get that blood pressure. Because sometimes if you take the blood pressure first, it will be sky high. So it gives the patient a little time to settle in. Assisting in the primary exam, inspection, Inspection can be inspection of the gate as they walk down the hall to the room. It can be noting the color of the patient. So are they pale? Are they bluish? Are they jaundice? Posture? And then mannerisms also all fall under inspection. Palpation, palpation of the abdomen, breasts, or thyroid. We're oftentimes looking for masses or tumors. 
percussion. We oftentimes will use compression, compression percussion with our hand and we will lay the hand flat down and we will tap with our other hand. Oftentimes used with the abdomen. You also use percussion for testing tendons. So the Achilles tendon or the patellar tendon. Auscultation, listening of the heart and lungs. Measuration, so height, weights, sometimes range of motion, the angles of joints. And then manipulation, so the range of motion, how well does that joint move? Extension or flexion is the term often used. Draping of the patient. We oftentimes want to drape the patient to protect the privacy and keep the patient warm. Position the sheet so that it allows complete visibility for examiners to conduct examination. And then expose one portion of the body at a time during the examination. Just helps with the patient comfort and builds that trust among your patients.